Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today still working on the horizontal boring mill, trying to get this thing ready to put back together. Now, uh, this past week, since last weekend when I was really kind of working on it hard, uh, I did come out here in the shop a good bit in the evenings and just been doing mostly grunt work, like I call it. And uh, that's been getting some of these castings and pieces and parts cleaned up, painted, kind of ready to start putting back together. And I've still got some more of that to do, uh, but we are making good headway on it. Not something that I really shot any video on by any means, but uh, in the process of getting things cleaned up and getting ready to go back together, I found a little problem on a part and decided I think what we're gonna do is just make a new part to replace uh, the one uh, the original one that's, that's got an issue. I will say that as far as the table and stuff goes and getting uh, this uh, saddle and stuff finished up, I've ordered the Turkite, which is the uh, wear strips that we'll be putting on the ways uh, to kind of build up some extra height as well as just get some good material in there to help these things slide around. A little bit more modern approach, how mo more modern machines are built, but it's a good upgrade to this and will help it last a lot longer now that we've got everything scraped in. So I've got all that ordered. I'm waiting on it to come in. Um, evidently, they're out of stock on some stuff right now, and I'm having to wait a little while. Uh, like It seems like everybody's having issues with that kind of stuff right now. So anyway, when that comes back in, we will get back to work on finishing getting the saddle put back together. But in the meantime, let's go over here and show you the part that we're gonna be working on today. So down here on the end of the, the ways, I've got this block of cast iron that's sitting on here. And uh, this is basically gonna ride on the ways. And what this is, is this is the base piece for the tailstock for this horizontal boring mill. Uh, you can put a long boring bar through here and to do that, you need to support it on the end. So there's this basically this tall piece that sits on top of here. Uh, there's some, shafting that comes through here you see this gear down here this just rotates and fits into a bevel gear up in that tail stock that will raise and lower the uh, the height of the bushing for the for the boring bar uh, as the head raises and lowers uh, so that's basically the whole purpose of this there's a whole other big casting that mounts onto this now on the front side we've got this little shaft that comes in here and again it has a a uh, little gear here that will basically fit over a shaft that has, this is for the uh, lead screw. So it, this uh, worm kind of fits on top of that lead screw. And there's a crank on the front that you can put a lever on. And when you turn this, uh, you know, that will allow you to crank this thing back and forth to adjust where you want it to be. So when I was working on this and taking it apart, pull this shaft out. If you notice, uh, we're missing a tooth uh, on this piece uh, where that handle cranks on it. Probably not a huge issue. Um, it'll probably would work just fine like it is, but hey, we got it apart. Now's the time to, to try to fix it. So um, this is going to be today's project right here. So just a closer up view here, and you can see we've got the... Uh, kind of the spline there on the end that that handle fits up on, and we are missing a tooth. Uh, don't know what happened, but it has definitely uh, been broken off right there. I thought about uh, just repairing this. I could weld that up, put some material back in there, and machine it back out. That would be the easy thing to do. And honestly, I think it would be an acceptable repair. But I think what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna make a whole new part. Uh, I just feel like it'll be stronger and um, hold up better. A lot of these other teeth have a fair amount of wear on them as well. And uh, we've already broken one tooth, you know, how much longer some of these other ones gonna hold up? So I don't know. So this is today's project. We're gonna make a new one. We're gonna start out on the lathe, turn this thing out, and then we'll have to go to the horizontal milling machine and actually cut that spline in there. I've already cut a similar spline for the uh, cross slide handle on the table that we repaired that, um, that lead screw some time back, again, in a previous video. So I've already kind of got my tooling to cut this spline. 
uh, already worked up. So hopefully that's not going to be a big problem for us. Let's uh, go over to the lathe and see if we can start knocking this part out. All right, I got a piece of stock here in the lathe. Uh, this is some shafting that was left over from a project that's a little bit larger diameter than what I need, but no problem, we can turn it down. And the length is a couple inches longer than what we need, but this should be a good piece to make this out of. So um, let's go ahead and fire up our lathe. And we're gonna start by just uh, facing that. I got a uh, rough saw cut on that front right now. So we're just gonna face that until we get a nice flat, straight front on there. A little bit more. Be plenty deep enough to give us a good center to support that. So let's see, we're starting out. This is inch and five eighths or inch point six two five is the outside diameter right now. The uh, large diameter that we need to go to, I'm just going to take about thirty thousandths right now just to kind of. Yeah, that's not cutting very good at all. Let me see if I can tighten this uh, tailstock up. I changed my cutter and I slowed my speed down just a little bit. And that does seem to be cutting a lot better. I think I just need to change that insert out on that other tool cutter, but uh, this will get us going. That's not quite clean enough, but I give us enough to get a measurement on that we can uh, work off of. So let's let this turn down and uh, we'll get that cleaned up to where it needs to be. All right. Let's see where we're at down here. This is where the measurement's gonna be at. So we're at uh, 618, one inch 618. I'm gonna put that in my digital readout. 1.618. Second pass, I'm purposely gonna leave a little extra on there and clean it up in the, uh, one more pass. Probably could just do it all in one pass. The lathe would cut it no problem. I just want to make sure we hit that measurement right on. So uh, uh, just take my time and sneak up on it. All right, we are on our final pass here. Should be our final pass. And uh, on this first diameter, Let's get that down there. We'll get a good measurement on it and make sure where we need to be. And that should get us our first time and we'll cut our second one. Let's uh, stop right there. Gonna just quickly come in here and yeah, we're good. So I'm gonna back that out where I'm not dragging back across that surface and we'll come back down here to the end and our next diameter needs to be inch and a quarter and we need to come in from the end i see uh, 8.0625 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and just touch my cutter to the end i'm going to zero out my uh, z-axis on the lathe on my digital readout and i can just measure that. So we're going to come in, was it 8.0625, which is about right there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here 
and make a mark, and that'll give me a visual indication of where I need to turn that inch and a quarter down to. So we'll touch back off down here. And I'm just gonna take a good pass down through here. So it's about a hundred thousand. Take another hundred thou here. And another hundred. That should leave us about 25 thousandths over, according to the digital readout. And I think my game plan here is, is we're going to go ahead and rough out the, uh, the next step in there. And we'll let this part cool down and then finish turn those uh, final dimensions. I always like to cut my final dimensions when the part's a little bit cooler. Right now, I'm sure we got a lot of heat in it. And that is going to expand it and make the uh, diameters, uh, when they cool down, will be below size. So uh, we'll just get it rough to shape and then uh, let it cool and then come back and uh, finish it up here in a little bit. We'll finish this cut and cut that one inch piece on the end. Come in two inches here. Mark that. And we got about, I'm going to take another hundred. Two, four, six, eight, ten, right there. Another hundred. This is going to one inch diameter. And I'm going to go ahead and take, and I'll leave me about 30 thousandths on the diameter here, just a little bit lighter cut. We were going to let this uh, cool down, and we'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, we uh, took a little lunch break and uh, let this cool off. I also, uh, while we were down there, I changed this insert out. So uh, hopefully that's going to give us a little bit better finish. I want to get back in here on this one to 0 0.1250. I am just going to touch off on this. to see where I'm at on it. So we've got about 10, 20, 30, about 40 thousandths to take off of it. I'm gonna do half of that in the first pass because this is a new insert. I wanna re-zero my digital readout. So I'm just gonna take about 20 thousandths and uh, we'll cut down through there and see where we are. It's cutting much better. And we're actually right where we need to be. 
I, uh, I got lucky there. I um, misread my calipers. I had said I had 40,000, so I really had 20,000. So I got a little scratch mark coming in there, but that won't hurt anything at all. But uh, we're about a thou under, uh, undersized, and that's going to give us the clearance we need in there anyway. So that'll be fine. Uh, let me go ahead and put that measurement in on my DRO. We're going to come down to this uh, one inch side. Let me uh, touch off on that one. And I should have about 30 thousandths to come off of it. Yeah, that's exactly what I got. So I'm just going to dial in to one inch on my DRO. And I need to go into two inches to that shoulder. I'm just looking at that on my digital readout. out and the original kind of had a little recess down there in the bottom so I'm just going to do that same little feature all right we need to come to this shoulder clean it up as well let's see this one's going to be at 8.0625 that's the final depth right there All right. All right, looking at the original, this is about a half a thousandths under one inch, and we're about five thousandths over right now, so I need to take a little bit off of that. This other measurement's uh, right on the money. All right, we're gonna go right there. Just fuzz a little bit off. So guys, we, uh, Turn this around. I did swap my chuck and put a four jaw chuck on here just so that I could get this uh, trued in. I've got this thing running within half a thou uh, off of the original. So we were running really nice and true. Went ahead, I had about an inch extra material. I went ahead and cut that off to length and we're ready to finish this thing out. So uh, what we're gonna do is face the end. Again, we'll put a center in this end. Uh, that will really be needed when we get over on the horizontal middle machine to do the uh, uh, the, the spline cut up here, but we will go ahead and put that in there. I'm not going to probably turn this with it. It's not long enough. This uh, collar up here measures uh, 0.5625. I've kind of got a mark on there. It's not a critical thickness, but we're going to get close to it. And then this diameter gets turned down to uh, 7 eighths, 0.875. So uh, let's uh, knock it out. Come in here with our center now and cut the center on this. Hog a bunch of metal off of here. About a hundred thousandths cut. We got to get that down to seven eighths diameter. Got a line about right there for that thickness. And we'll go ahead and take her down. This should be about 900,000. We're going to 875, so it leaves about 25,000 
roughly to take off of this. Once again, uh, once we get this cut made, I'm gonna let it cool down. We'll come in and get another really good uh, measurement on it after it cools down and take it down that final diameter. Uh, once this is done and we break those corners, I think we'll have our turning done. We'll be ready to go cut our spline. So guys, up next, we need to cut the spline on here. This is a seven uh, tooth spline and I've got it set up over here on the horizontal milling machine. We got the dividing head, dividing head set up on seven uh, increments. So this is a 40, or excuse me, a five to one ratio dividing head. I've got it in, let's see, we're in the 84 uh, hole plate and it is 60 um, holes. So I need to go 60 holes and that'll turn it one seventh of a circle. And we'll do, of course, that seven times and uh, that will do our increments over here. I do have this disconnected from the lead attachment, which we had it set up for doing spiral gears. Obviously we're just doing straights on this, so no need for all that. Everything's disconnected there. Now, as far as cutting the, uh, the, the spline, uh, I had made a similar part uh, for the same machine, basically with the same spline on it to repair another lead screw sometime back. And I did not have a horizontal milling cutter that had this profile, anything close to it in my collection. It is an oddball, uh, something that probably would have had to been custom made even back in the day. So to get around that, what I did is I just have a single piece of high speed steel on a boring bar here. I made this, uh, this uh, bar and we, we just ground a piece of high speed steel to that profile by hand over on the grinder. That was all done again in a previous video sometime back. I'm just reusing the setup here. So I didn't really show the setup. If you're interested in that, you can go back and watch the video we did before, but we are gonna show the process here. So basically what I'm gonna do, I've already got the cutter in here. I took it out, touched it up, resharpened it. I uh, honed it a little bit over on my sharpening stone. So we should have a nice sharp cutter in here. We're gonna come down, touch, off on the part that'll give us a zero and we need to go about 350 thousandths depth pretty much all the way down to uh, just shy of hitting this uh, this uh, piece here that the that the wrench slides up on and we're gonna cut um not all the way through this we're gonna cut about half well probably a little over halfway probably three quarters of the way through and that will of course sweep up and if you look on the original it sweeps up into the back back here, and that's that's perfectly fine, not gonna hurt a thing, uh, but it's actually only going about three quarters of the depth in, and then uh, kind of cutting itself out the back. So I think we are pretty much ready to go here. So let me fire this uh, mill up. I've got my cutter going at, what's that, 124 RPMs. And uh, we are over the part, and I'm just going to manually raise this up. We're getting kind of close there, so I'm just going to bring it up real slow until we touch off. All right, we are touching off right there. I'm going to actually bring it up a little bit. Let this uh, back out. All right, I think we are ready to try to cut this. I'm going to turn my feet on. Now I am uh, moving, I'm going to move, wrap it in just a little bit there, get a little bit closer, but we are cutting at a half inch per minute. I got it on the slowest setting right now. I just want to kind of see how this goes. Um, I would like to speed that up because that is super, super slow. But let's uh, see how this cuts. So I've got about 100 thousandths on my depth of cut. Uh, so let's just kind of see how this goes. I, I'm hoping I can go a little bit deeper and a little bit faster, but we're going to kind of ease into this and see how it goes. I'm starting to make a cut. You know, this is not an ideal cut where we're only making 
a single tooth cut. Ideally, you'd have a cutter on here that had multiple teeth. So every revolution you were making multiple uh, cuts, but you know, it is what it is. For a one-off job like this, this is uh, an acceptable way of doing things with a single point cutter like this. If this was a production job and we had, you know, multiple hundreds, whatever, of parts to cut, you know, it would be much, much better to have a custom cutter made uh, to do this job. But it's just not practical to do that for a one-off job or cost-effective. So uh, we're just going to see if we can get through this. All right, that's it. So we will uh, move our table out. Get past the cut there. So let me uh, turn this. We are cutting our seventh uh, slot here on this first pass. Like I said, it's only about a hundred thousandths deep uh, on this first pass, but uh, it's working. It's a little rough, you know, it's a little slow, but it's, this is working. We're going to get there, and we've used this in the past successfully, so I'm confident we'll be fine. After this uh, pass, what we will do is I'm going to lower that, or raise the table rather, uh, another hundred thousandths, and we'll make another round. Uh, like I said, we got about 350 thousandths total depth that we need to cut on this. Uh, so slow and easy is going to win the race here, guys. Uh, just another look here, kind of on the back side uh, of the cut going on. Just been uh, dripping a little bit of oil in there as we go. It kind of runs back down in that cut. Now that I've got a little trough in there, so uh, that's helping a little bit. All right, this will be the final cut at this depth. Like I said, we got another 150 thousandths to go. Probably do it in two more passes. We'll do another full 100 thou. And then I will uh, come in and do the last one at a 50 thousandths cut. A little bit lighter, hopefully get a little bit better finish on that final pass. Although this finish is fine. Uh, but theoretically it should be a little bit smoother cut, hopefully on that final pass. This will be our final, final pass. So seven more cuts and uh, we should be good. Well, there we go. I think we got our machining done here uh, on the ends. I think it looks awesome. Um, I did test fit this with the handle and uh, that engages very nicely. So very happy with that. Uh, you can see the original back here with the missing tooth. Um, the last thing we need to do, do is if you notice, there is a hole through the end of the original down here. There is a hole through the gear that this mounts to and there was a tapered pin that went down through those. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this in here. This gear. That's a nice tight fit on there. There it goes. 
So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to we need to drill and put a tapered reamer hole through here. I'm not going to try to reuse the original. We're going to rotate it about 90 degrees, go down through fresh material and uh, drill all the way through and then ream a uh, tapered hole for a tapered pin. That's what we had in here originally. And to do that, I think what I'm going to do is take it over to the radial drill and set it up and do it there. And when this is all together, obviously, whenever you turn the handle, it turns the gear in here. And this, of course, again, there's a lead screw that's up underneath this. Uh, and you can manually move this back and forth using that lead screw. Got my part over here on the radial drill. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little shim in there temporarily. It's about a two thousandths inch thick shim. And that will just, when I clamp this, I want to make sure that we've got a little bit of wiggle room in there that we're not going to make it too tight. Now I'm going to get a clamp and kind of clamp this in place, hopefully, and then we'll see about drilling it. I think we're ready to drill this. I've got my clamp in here kind of holding all this in place. Again, we got a little shim behind that to give me some clearance. My goal here is, is we're going to use a number five tapered pin to go down through here. To do that, we need to start by putting a little center drill in there. That'll just give me a good center to start on. We'll drill it with a quarter inch drill bit, and then we'll come back with a number five tapered reamer. Uh, and ream that out to a taper for that pin to fit into. So uh, start out, I just want to very lightly peck this, kind of give us a place to put it. And I think I need to actually go in just ever so slightly right there. All right. All right, that'll give me a place for my drill bit to start. Go down, and we will drill that all the way through. I'm just going to turn my power feed on and just let it drill down. I am going to kind of clear that out a little bit. That didn't sound good. That's probably where I'm going from one material to the other, but I want to make sure I didn't break that drill bit and know I'm good. I'm going to put a little cutting oil in there though. Yeah, that was just where we were transitioning from one piece of steel to the other. Like I said, I'm going to pick this a little bit just because I want to clear the chips out. We are getting kind of a deep hole. We are through the hole. And we'll put this number five tapered reamer in here. Again, this is for a number five size uh, tapered pin, which is what we're going to be putting in here. I'm going to kind of feed this by hand. We are going to put a little cutting oil in there. The original tapered pin that was in here. And I'm just kind of pushing it in there a little bit. I was, I just want to kind of see how deep I need to go. Uh, we need to go a little bit deeper, as I suspected. Uh, but got to be careful with these tapered reamers. 
you go just a little bit too far and you've gone way too far. Yeah, I'm going to probably just leave it right there. By the time I hammer that home, it's going to be probably where it needs to be. So this is another tapered reamer. The one we had before over there that had the spiral on it was made for power reaming. Uh, this one here with the straight flutes on it is made for hand reaming. And since we're going to be hand reaming here, we'll use this one. So I'm just going to run that down in there just a little bit. Again, a little bit goes a long way with these reamers. So that's probably not quite enough. Good pair of pliers. Put our handle on there. That is going to do the trick. Well, there we go. One more repair over here on the old Lucas horizontal boring mill. One step closer to getting her back up and running. Um, still waiting on our turkite to come in. Uh, that's really kind of my next big step. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll get take care of some of these little steps. They got to get done before this thing is finished. Uh, I think I got a couple of other little things that I want to get knocked out as well on this. So uh, we'll be working on some of those as well uh, while we're waiting on those to come and probably see some more videos come up along the way uh, related to this machine as we get it closer and closer to being finished. Guys, with that, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, always greatly appreciated. Really helps with the algorithms on YouTube really helps my content be discovered by other people. And I appreciate it if you guys do that because it does make a difference. Um, big, huge thank you as always to the supporters of the site. Guys, for the ones that do support me on Patreon and PayPal and through other means financially, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Realize everybody can't do that, but the ones that do, you make a difference. And I really, really appreciate you as well. Guys, with that, we'll sign off. We'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.